Good evening, everyone. We will call the Tuesday, January 21, 2014 City Council meeting to order. First order of business is the roll call. Estes? Here. Peterson? Here. Lewis? Here. Doyle? Here. Wright? Here. Scott? Here. Nordstrom? Here. Roberts? Here. Clayton? Here. Lorente? We have quorum. And just, just so everyone knows, uh, normally our City Council meetings are on Monday nights tonight. It was held on Tuesday because of Martin Luther King holiday uh, yesterday. As a result of the scheduling to tonight, we had two council members that were unable to attend, so just so everyone knows why uh, they weren't able to attend. We'll now proceed with the invocation offered by Dr. Richard Wells of John Witherspoon College. You're welcome to participate, but not required. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Mayor and Council, I just returned from about two weeks in Myanmar. We have so very, very much for which to be thankful. And Father, I want to uh, begin tonight by saying thank you for the great undeserved privilege we have to live in such a country as this with freedoms and blessings the world can only imagine. And we thank you in a special way for the privilege we have to live in this good place. We thank you for our mayor and our council. We thank you for their willingness to sacrifice time and energy and effort to make this place what it should be for the good of all of us who live here and call it home. I pray, O oh God, that you will superintend all that takes place here tonight. Pray that you'll guide all the discussion and every deliberation and every decision that will be made. And may they serve your purposes in the lives of the people who live in this area and may it ultimately serve your glorious purposes for your creation in this world and in this place in particular. We give this night into your hands, Heavenly Father, giving you thanks and praise and uh, trusting you for the wisdom that we need tonight. In the name of your Son, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Wells. We're now at the time of the adoption of the agenda. Are there any additions or changes to tonight's agenda? We have one clarification that needs to be made on item number 25. This was to acknowledge the discussion on waiving the hookup fee for Dr. Utiger, and that was from the, the last public works uh, council meeting. So just to clarify that that's what that item is, is, is about but that will remain on consent unless someone pulls it off. Seeing none, do we have a motion to approve the agenda as is? So moved. Motion by Doyle, second by Estes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Agenda has been adopted. We are now on our Citizen of the Month, and Regina Lewis, if you could come up to the front along with the Ward 3 Council members. The January 2014 Citizen of the Month Award 
is honoring an individual who has exemplified great public service to our city. We are pleased to present this award to Ward 3 resident Regina Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, I have to say, no relation. <laughs> Good for her as well. Regina was born in Sanish, North Dakota, where her parents operated ferry boats to cross and navigate the Missouri River until bridges were built. Around 1967, her parents became very instrumental in establishing the Canyon Lake Senior Center, where I have the honor of serving on the board with her as a liaison for the council when I can make it. Uh, Regina carried on their, her dedication to the center and served on the board of the directors from 2007 to 2011. She was a chairperson on many projects, including the Senior Olympic Games, and her dedication and positive attitude contributed to consistently making the senior citizen better every day. Regina worked at the Registrar's Office in the South Dakota School of Mines from 1966 through 1991. She was not only an official of the school, but more importantly, a mentor to many students for there for over 25 years. Regina also started working on, on local election boards in the 1950s and continued the patriotic service into the 1990s. A common phrase at the Canyon St. Lake Senior Center is, let Regina take charge. Her dedication and pursuit of a better life for our senior citizens resonates in her attitude and her work. Her career at the School of Mines influenced and encouraged many students to complete and succeed in their academic life. With each student's academic success, a graduate came, de came, a, excuse me, came a graduate dedicated to improving their community. Thank you, Regina, for your dedication to our city, to the city of Rapid City, and the citizens of Rapid City, and you are a proud member of our community, and we are glad to have you. So congratulations. Thank you. Now the fun part. Whereas the City of Rapid City has established the Citizen of the Month Award to an individual, the January Citizen of the Month is awarded to Regina Lewis, a Rapid City and Ward 3 resident. Recognizing Regina's past enthusiastic work with ethic and hard work, the Canyon Lake Senior Center and her involvement throughout the community, <clears throat> and Regina's commitment to help others show true passion to the City of Rapid City. Now therefore we, Alderman Jerry Wright and Alderman Chad Lewis of Rapid City, on behalf of Sam Quaker, Mayor of Rapid City, do hereby declare proclaim Regina Lewis as the January 2014 Citizen of the Month recipient in recognition of her innovation and leadership and the contribution she has made to our community. I present that to her. I do, if I can. You uh, thank you. I, I nominate Regina, and she says, in, in the true humble spirit of those that serve our community, she said, I don't deserve it. There's a lot of people who do a lot more. Well, Regina not only has been a hard worker at the, at the uh, Kenya Lake Senior Center, and years ago when I was much younger, I was a, a tech student, and I know there are many of us, because she was in the registrar's office, she was kind of like a mentor, encouraging us saying, you can do it. I know her son, Ron, graduated with me. And I think it's time that we recognize these people in our community that are mentors and helpers to our young to succeed in, their pers in pursuit of their careers. Regina was just one of those persons, and she deserves an ovation and more than we can give you tonight, but thank you so much for everything you've done. Thank you. I loved working at the School of Mines, working with these kids and watching them grow up. And and you old. Know what they turn out to be, you know, when they get graduate. They have the world by the tail and away they go. They, we have a lot of school of mines who are presidents of big companies, have their own companies, and, and uh, placement here, they love to get our boys from the school of mines. <laughs> so, thank you, Regina. Thank you, God Jerry. Bless. We got to get some pictures, right? Oh, we got to get a picture. Oh, I got it. I'm on both feet now. Almost okay. dancing. We're going to expect it more often. <laughs>
And now for our Veteran of the Month, if Lieutenant Sarah Penry could come up, along with Ward 4 Councilman John Roberts. In partnership with the Veterans Coordination Commission, we are pleased to present the January 2014 Veteran of the Month recognition to Lieutenant Sarah Penry. Lieutenant Penry graduated from the University of Nebraska in 2011, go Cornhuskers, where she received a commission in the United States Air Force through their ROTC program. From there, she completed a nine-month intense intelligent training course, intelligence training course, where she excelled as one of the top in her class. She arrived at Ellsworth last September and hit the ground running. She completed her initial qualification course quickly, which made her eligible to support the mission at the 432nd Attack Squadron supporting the MQ-9 Reapers. Since being stationed at Ellsworth, Lieutenant Penry is known for constantly building her knowledge base and gaining more and more experience, which has helped her to become one of the subject matter experts for this important mission. Not only is Lieutenant Penry dedicated to her country and mission, but also to her community and her fellow co-workers. This month alone, she has supported over 200 hours in flying operations as a primary intelligent analyst. This includes duties of briefing our wing commander daily of the status of our flying operations within the 432nd attack squadron and preparing the flying crews for their upcoming missions. Not only has she been leading the way in her work environment, she has also been very active in her military and local community. Lieutenant Penry is an active member on one of Ellsworth Air Force Base's soccer teams, as well as a regularly contributing to care packages for deployed members overseas. She volunteers at her church to teach Sunday school to preschool age children prepares food for her 50-plus congregation, plays the guitar on a weekly basis for her young adult Bible study, Lieutenant Penry not only contributes her time to her community, but she also supports individuals in need. She has been coaching one of her fellow co-workers on a one-on-one -on -one basis to help improve their physical fitness and nutrition. As the winner of the Black Hills CrossFit competition, in which she competed against 44 other people, she is certainly well qualified to help in this area. Lieutenant Pen Sarah Penry is a great example of how military members can also contribute to our local community. She is truly among the best and is a great asset to our country, our military, and our community, and is most deserving of Veteran of the Month. Thank you for your dedication to our country. Thank you, everyone. One more announcement before we proceed into our meeting is we have an exciting announcement to make uh, coming from Council President and I. On Thursday, January 30, 
at 7 p.m. at the Performing Arts Center in the Historic Rapid City Theater. We have a celebrated pianist coming, and his name is Vadim Kolodinko. He's one of the best in the world. He was born in Kiev, uh, Ukraine, and he is the first musician in his family. He made his first appearances in the United States, China, Hungary, and Croatia at the age of 13. He currently resides in Moscow with his wife and uh, two-year-old daughter. This is a joint fundraiser for the Black Hills Symphony Orchestra and the Rapid City uh, Concert Association. This is sponsored by the Clock Shop on St. Joseph Street. Again, this is on Thursday, January 30 at 7 p.m. at the Performing uh, Arts Center uh, in the historic Rapid City Theater. If you're interested in this event, you can call 211 or you can call my office at 394-4110 for additional uh, information. Uh, tickets may be purchased at the Black Hills Piano Gallery or the Clock Shop. The Black Hills Piano Gallery or the Clock Shop. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is an executive session. This will be for the exclusive purpose of discussing item three. Do we have a motion to go into executive session? Second. Motion by Robert, second by Nordstrom. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. We are now in executive session.
We have a motion to come out of executive Go session. Second. Motion by Lewis, second by Doyle. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. We are now on to item number three. This is direction to staff regarding uh, Winia et al. versus the city of Rapid City. This is involving the application for a conditional use permit for a casino at uh, 7th and Indiana Streets. And uh, this was the only item discussed tonight in executive session. So we'll go to our lights. We'll go to Jerry Wright. I make a motion we do not appeal this case. We have a motion by Councilman Wright and a second by Councilman Roberts uh, to not appeal this matter to the South Dakota Supreme Court. Any discussion on the motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries with one no from Richie Nordstrom. Anyone else? I do not have any general public comment items tonight. Have I missed anyone? Seeing none, we'll, we'll move on to items four through 46. Public comment is now open for items four through 46. I do not have any speaker request forms for items four through 46. Have I missed anyone? Last call. Okay. Public comment is now closed for items four through 46. Any council members or staff would like to remove any items from four to 46? Please hit your lights. Okay, seeing none, do we have a motion to approve items four through 46 as listed? Second. Okay, we have a motion by Nordstrom and a second by Doyle to approve items four through 46 as listed. Any discussion? Seeing, on, seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We are now on non consent items, items 47 through 57. <clears throat> We'll just take, we'll take 57 separately. Let's do 47 through 56 uh, first. Uh, we do not have any public comments. Seeing none, public comment is now uh, closed. Okay, item number 47, Chad Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item number 47 is a second reading of ordinance 5976, an ordinance to establish a mobile ice cream vendor license in the city of Rapid City by adding chapter 5.50 of the Rapid City Municipal Code and move approval. Second. Motion by Lewis, second by Peterson on item 47. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries, 48, Chad. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item number 48 is the second reading of ordinance 5977, an ordinance to change the process for city authorization of ice cream vending from vehicles on city streets from a contract to a mobile ice cream vendor license by amending section 5.48.010 of the Rapid City Municipal Code, and I move approval. Motion by Lewis, second by Peterson to approve item number 48. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries, 49. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item number 49 is the first reading of ordinance 5978, the supplemental appropriation number one for 2014. I move approval. Second. Motion by Lewis, second by Doyle to approve item number 49. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 50. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Number, item number 50 is the first reading of Ordinance 5979, an ordinance to codify the method for calculating uh, general fund cash fund reserve balance by amending section 2.40.140 of the Rapid City Municipal Code. I move approval. Second. Motion by Lewis, second by Peterson. Any discussion? We'll go to Councilman Jerry Wright. I just want to share with the public that there's been discussion on the council as to whether we should be 10% or 15%. There's been a lot of discussion, debate, plus, minus, for and against. And the big question is, and is um, if we have a 15% versus 10%, there's a approximately, I think it's 2 million cash reserve that's in addition. And with our recent uh, experience with Storm Atlas, and we understand also from the era from 2007 to 2009 how the economy can change. We're going to we're hanging with a relatively conservative 15 percent. There is concern of, of members of the council that that's two million dollars that could or should be spent possibly on roads and streets. But at this time, we'll support the 15 percent and keep an eye on it. That's it. Thank you. Any further discussion on item 50? All in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 51. We'll go to Richie Nordstrom. 
Thank you, Mayor. Item 51 is a request by Dream Design International Incorporated for a preliminary subdivision plan for proposed lots 6 through 21 uh, for the right-of-way of Elk Crossing for a property generally located east of Marlin Drive and north of East Minnesota Street, and I move to approve with stipulations. Second. Motion by Nordstrom, second by Roberts to approve with stipulations. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries 52. Thank you, Mayor. Item 52 is a request by Centerline for Lazy P6 Land Company Incorporated for a preliminary subdivision for proposed lots 20 for property generally located at the northeast corner of intersection of Sandra Lane and Topaz Lane, and I move to approve with stipulations. Motion by Nordstrom, second by Doyle. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries, 53. Item 53 is a request by Dream Design International Incorporated for a preliminary subdivision plan for proposed lot one of the Big Sky uh, Business Park for a property generally located at the northeast corner of intersection of Bernice Street and Neal Street. And I move to approve with stipulations. Motion by Nordstrom, second by Lewis. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 54 is a request by Fisk Land Surveying and Consulting Engineers Incorporated for E. Jason Stamper of Stamper Black Hills Gold Jewelry Incorporated for a preliminary subdivision plan for proposed lots one and two of the Stamper subdivision of property generally located at 7201 South Highway 6, excuse me, South Highway 16, and I move to approve with stipulations. Second. Motion by Nordstrom, second by Roberts. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 55 is a request by FMG Incorporated for GWH Properties LLC for a preliminary subdivision plan for proposed lots A, B, and lot two and block two of Minnesota Park subdivision for property generally located at the south of Minnesota Street and west of Wisconsin Avenue. And I move to approve with stipulations. Motion by Nordstrom, second by Peterson. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 56 is a request by Dream De Design International Incorporated for a preliminary subdivision plan for um, proposed tracks. And I'll skip over all of the uh, lots and block numbers of, of Orchard Meadows for property generally located at southeast of intersection of Elkvale Road and South Dakota Highway 44. And I move to approve with stipulations. Second. Motion by Nordstrom, second by Lewis. Any discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. We are now on item number 57. I do not have any speaker request. Uh, forms for this item. Is there anyone that would like to speak? If you just come forward and state your name for the record, and then the floor is yours. Mayor, Council. My name is Tim Peeper. I'm the manager for Hertz Rent a Car here at the airport. Um, we just wanted to state, well, I'd like to state my support for CAM and also some concerns. Um, first of all, if I had the opportunity to go to New Zealand for a year, it would be great. Although I was informed by my company that I wouldn't have my position there when I got back. Um, that's the concern that we have. Um, by somebody leaving for a year, they're going to lose the they're going to lose a certain amount of their control that they have with their staff and the situation. So, um, like I say, we're just we're just a little concerned on these issues about having our airport director leave for a year and what's going to happen while our airport director's gone. Um, you know, the last two months, the airport has shown declines. We're just scared that if the declines start <clears throat> increasing to you know the 10% range, um, <coughs> what what benefits do we get out of this as somebody that has to bid to be on the airport? Um, you know we have to guarantee the airport money if we don't hit our hit our numbers. Does the airport have that responsibility to us if the airport starts a major decline? Um, you know these are all questions that we have. So um, that being said, I just wanted to state, like I say, my support for CAM. I mean, like I say, the opportunity is great, but there are some concerns that my company has, so, all right. 
Thank you. Any other speaker request forms on that item? Seeing none, we'll move. To, uh, public comment is now closed. We'll move on to item 57. This is a report from the Rapid City Regional Airport Board, and we will recognize uh, Vice Chairman Ray Carpenter and Chairwoman Lisa Modric and our Director Cameron Humphreys. <laughs> we come at you one by one. Thank you, Mayor Quaker, for having us this afternoon or this evening, uh, President Wright, and also our city council members. Uh, we look forward to bringing you a very positive and a very directive report, as well as a directive plan. And um, with that, I'm going to click once. Fantastic. We have a, um, a brief overview that we're going to give you. And uh, with me in that overview is General Ray Carpenter. And uh, General Ray Carpenter is our vice president on the board, and I serve as president on the board, second term. And our overview, as you follow, is our Rapid City Regional Airport is an FAA-certified commercial service airport. We operate like a business, as a business, and we generate our own revenue without tax dollar by inter being enterprising. Our, we are governed by a five-member executive board, and we operate under a bylaws. Our appointment is by mayor, and it's confirmed by you, our council. We're full governing, we're authority, and the only thing that we don't set is annual appropriations and purchasing of the land. We are a $180 million local economy asset. That's what we bring to the economy. And the full-time positions are 350. There's 20 commercial businesses, four airlines, Allegiant, American Delta United, and that's constantly expanding and growing. Our Army National Guard, aviation facilities, and our U.S. Forest Service and our slurry base. Um, we're a strong uh, uh, business, and um, we find that our duties and responsibilities are extremely valuable to you and to the citizens of Rapid City. And with that, we'd like to move uh, right into a, our report. And I'm going to bring Cameron Humphreys in to give you an overview of our report. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Mayor, Council, thank you for the opportunity. The, this is one of the things that, that I enjoy doing most to talk about the airport. Um, I think it's uh, one of the better stories in the city. I mean, we have a lot of good stories, but certainly uh, this is one of them. And in the few moments here that I have with you, I'm going to be talking about some of the accomplishments over the last uh, five years and then uh, this specifically this last year. But when you talk about those accomplishments, uh, they're not mine. Uh, they're not even my staff's uh, the, or the board's or the council. It takes a team. It takes, and I mean this sincerely, that the successes that we've had over the last five years uh, have been a team effort. We've had great support uh, from the staff, from, um, from my board, and from the council. So as I move through these quickly, uh, sorry, I want you to keep that in mind. So for the last five years, um, I wanted to highlight a couple of the things that, uh, that we've done. Air service, in terms of air service development, uh, we actually added uh, American Airlines. It wasn't uh, too long ago that we didn't even have American Airlines, and we added Dallas, Fort Worth, and Chicago uh, to our mix of flights. Uh, we also expanded United Airlines service to Houston uh, and expanded Delta Airlines uh, to Atlanta. We just got word of that. It's really exciting. Um, one of the things that, uh, that we don't have is great connections to the southeast uh, United States, and Atlanta brings that. So I'm really excited about that. That's going to be starting here this summer. Uh, financial health um, of the airport is solid. No tax dollars. I want to I stay on that point for a moment. We don't, uh, we don't use any tax dollars for our operations and maintenance. We, we generate our own revenue via rates and charges. Um, and as a matter of fact, we pay our own way. Uh, over the last five years, the airport has paid the city $3.8 million for services rendered. Those are for interdepartmental charges, for uh, legal services, for uh, financial assistance, for uh, HR, um, and then also for law enforcement officer and firefighter uh, wages and benefits. Our, an our annual budget has been in the black for the last five years. We've not gone over our budget in the last five years. Uh, we are extremely efficient. It's amazing me to me to think that we manage the entire airport 24-7, 365 days with 23 full-time employees. Um, we're one of the most efficient airports in the country. Uh, one of the metrics that uh, is used nationally is the cost per plane passenger. I'm not sure what happened to our screen here. 
<laughs> I think we'll get it back. Thank you. Uh, the the uh, cost per in plane passenger is a metric that's used nationally to determine how efficient an airport is. So simply, all you do is you take the number of passengers you have and then you divide it by how much it costs you on an annual base to run, uh, run the airport to get a cost per in plane passenger. At Rapid City Regional Airport, it costs us $4.50 per passenger. The national average is $11. We're almost three times below the national average. Over the last five years, we have um, committed and accomplished $35 million in capital improvement projects. And I want to bring the point home that every project has been under budget. We also have had several independent audits, one of which, of course, is uh, the Compass Committee. Uh, we just finished up two audits uh, from the Compass. Uh, but we, have, we also have independent audits of our federal grant uh, and our PFC program, and all have verified compliance. From a safety standpoint, the FAA comes out annually, inspects our airport from top to bottom. We've had zero deficiencies for the last five years running. Uh, that has earned us uh, an FAA safety award. We've improved the facilities. I won't name all of them, but as you know, we completely remodeled and expanded our uh, commercial terminal. Uh, we built a new fire station that includes incident command center and a community room. Uh, we relocated our primary taxiway outside of the runway safety area uh, to be in compliance with FAA regulations. We added more general aviation parking ramps. Uh, interestingly, we just installed a next generation air traffic control communication system. This is a state of the art control, uh, uh, air traffic control communication system. Uh, and we also had some uh, customer service and art in the airport programs. We also have been very committed to training and national involvement. Um, our trade organization in the airport industry is the American Association of Airport Executives. Uh, we have uh, started down a path to get, there's levels of certification or accreditation, accreditation being the top level, um, but we have been working to get our members uh, certified and accredited. Over the, over the last five years, all of our operational staff has been certified and we have one member that's working on his accreditation and I received my accreditation as well. We've had, uh, we've received the AAAE training award for the last four years. We've been invited to sit in uh, on the FAA listening session uh, for their um, national rates and charges policy. Um, there was only four airports in the nation that were invited to sit in on that and we were one of them. Uh, we also hosted uh, this last year the AAAE Great Lakes Chapter National Conference. Uh, we've been asked to chair a National Air Service Development Conference uh, that's uh, in Indianapolis next year, and we've been invited into a leadership position at AAAE. This last year specifically, um, airline seat capacity uh, is actually up by 6%. And airfares are down. There's been a lot of discussion about airfares, but uh, the national average for a one-way ticket uh, in the United States last year was $283, and, and the price of our tickets were $243, so we were below the national average. And unlike what Mr. Uh, Piper said about uh, we've had uh, two difficult months, that's actually not accurate. Um, November and December were actually stellar months for us. We broke records in December. However, we're going to finish the year just slightly above last year overall. Uh, the budget is in the black uh, for the fifth year running. Um, this last year, we paid the city $763,000 in interdepartmental LEO and firefighting wages and benefits. Uh, we completed phase one of our runway improvement project. It's under budget. This is a four-phase project. It's a, about a $4 million project that we've received some federal funds for that will extend the life of our runway for another 20 years. Uh, we've began construction on a consolidated rental car facility. That uh, uh, project is under budget. Um, completed phase four of the water Airport Water Main Project, and thanks to the mayor and the council for supporting that. Uh, that uh, is an important project for us. Updated the airport primary guiding documents and added three new uh, general aviation businesses to our airport. And like I said, we landed uh, the nonstop service to Atlanta. And again, this year, uh, we had zero deficiencies on our FAA inspection. On our agenda for 2014, we've got a very aggressive agenda that I'm excited about. One is, is that, uh, again, we're introducing the nonstop service to Atlanta. It begins uh, uh, June 7th and ends at Labor Day. Um, 
and we're also pursuing Orlando service. Uh, I am I am confident that we're going to be able to get uh, direct service to Atlanta, or I'm sorry, to Orlando in the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, we've been in a uh, uh, very positive conversation with, uh, with the Legion Airlines. They're not quite ready to commit, but I think we're going to be able to get them over the hump. Uh, we're going to complete phase two through four of our runway rehab project. Uh, we're going to complete that consolidated rental car uh, facility. That consolidated rental car facility is an awesome facility. What it's going to do is it's going to help our rental car partners increase their efficiency. Um, it brings the facility that they use to fill the vehicle, do detail, and, and wash their cars much closer to where they actually rent those cars out. It's also going to dramatically reduce the water usage and the energy use uh, on the airport, and it's going to free up some property for future development for uh, aviation purposes. Uh, we're going to complete that airport water main project, and again, you know, hats off to the council, the mayor, and, and uh, Public Works for, uh, for working this project. Uh, it's, it's going along very well. It's going to provide much better fire protection out at the airport and will allow us to develop uh, at a much better rate. Uh, we're also going to begin the old terminal building demo. If you've been around here uh, or if you were here prior to 1984, you remember the old terminal building. Uh, we're finally going to tear that building down and uh, we're going to make rooms f room for some additional general aviation ramp and uh, corporate uh, aircraft parking. We also are going to be making room for uh, a general aviation terminal building. Um, WestJet, who is our fixed base operator, they provide the 24-hour services for fueling and maintenance on aircraft on our airport, has come to the board with a proposal of building a general, av general aviation terminal. Much like the commercial terminal, uh, it's a gateway for people that are flying into and out of Rapid City. But unlike the commercial terminal, this will be for those folks that are flying in on corporate aircraft or in uh, light general aviation aircraft. The reason this is important is, is that when we have businesses that are checking out our area to come and investigate whether or not this is a good place to do business, quite often they'll fly into uh, our area with the, with the corporate aircraft. Uh, this new general aviation terminal will indeed be that gateway and it will provide much better service uh, for that segment of the airport. And I'm excited to say that this is in partnership with WestJet. They're the ones that want to build it in cooperation with the airport on their dime. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. Um, we, the Rapid City Regional Airport is part of the National Integrated uh, Airport Plan. And it, we have to be part of that to be a certified commercial service airport, but we also have to be part of that plan in order to get federal funding for capital improvements. Well, in order to do that, we have to have a master plan uh, that's required by the FAA, and we have to update that every five to seven years. It's time for us to update that, and it really sets the course for the airport you know, for the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, we're going to start on that project this year. Uh, we're going to also conduct a triennial uh, full-scale emergency exercise. Uh, this is uh, really important because we get all of the community responders, be it uh, uh, city, county, um, uh, coming out there, and we work together to actually put on a full-scale a full aircraft accident so we all know what all of our respective duties are in case of an emergency. Uh, we're also going to participate in the Customs and Border Patrol User Fee Airport Feasibility Study. Uh, the Mayor's Economic Development uh, Initiative uh, on this end has, is looking into this. I know that, uh, that they uh, provided a report to, uh, uh, to the Council not too long ago, and we're going to be looking at bringing uh, Customs and Border Patrol to the airport, which would give us an international uh, designation. Uh, and then the last item on this, and we'll talk a little bit about that, uh, I'm going to be working remotely for the next year uh, via a letter of agreement. Um, with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring Lisa up, and she's going to talk about that uh, briefly. Thank you, Cameron. Um, we have an executive director plan, and this has been uh, reviewed, discussed, analyzed by the board of directors. And um, we've thought about this thoroughly, and um, we've thought about it unbiasedly, and we see a great opportunity to retain um, Cameron and his experience, his expertise, and to move this airport forward and continue it. And the master plan that he talks about, this is the book. He knows it by heart. So just the retention alone by having that kind of expertise before us and to retain that for the next year 
is very valid and very important to us. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Council. Uh, I retired from uh, the military about two years ago and uh, not long after uh, I met with the mayor and the mayor asked me to apply for a position on the board for the airport. Um, I, I don't fly any airplanes, but I've got some experience with aviation via the military background and also uh, I was a former member of the Army National Guard, and so I'm well aware of the uh, Army National Guard presence out there. I agreed, and uh, he, he nominated me, and the council uh, approved that nomination. And uh, I've been on the board now for almost two years. And I have to tell you that uh, from my perspective, every time I have an airport board meeting, every time I'm out there, I come away totally impressed with the operation out there, the functioning of the staff, and just the facility and how it works. I think it's something we in Rapid City ought to be tremendously proud of. Uh, it's an asset to our community. And I think as uh, Cameron uh, pretty much outlined, uh, we have a hugely successful program out there and it's being managed and led by a very capable, qualified individual in the airport executive director, Cameron Humphreys. I would suggest to you that he gets better every day. He knows the airport, as Lisa mentioned, uh, via the uh, master plan, but it's, just, it's not just the master plan. I mean, he's well tuned, attuned to everything that goes on out there. <clears throat> and you can ask him nearly any question, and I, I uh, challenge you to stump him on any question that he might be re responsible to answer. Secondly, I am, um, I'm terribly impressed with the leadership of our board president. Uh, Lisa Modric has done an excellent job in some fairly difficult times in the last year, and uh, she volunteered to do two years in the presidency instead of just one. So it saved me a little grief, I think, probably. But at any rate, uh, she does an excellent job, and I uh, admire her leadership and her initiative as we go into this whole program. So we've got about three questions that I would... I uh, guess you would ask. First of all, why a letter of agreement? Why, why do we want to even uh, consider paying almost $25,000 of Cameron's annual salary when he's going to be in New Zealand? Well, first of all, it's because we want to retain him. We're not trying to finance his trip to the beach or anything else in New Zealand. That's really, uh, if you know Cameron, that's not even on the list. We trust him explicitly to take care of everything that we ask him to do, and <clears throat> knowing what I know about Cameron, we're not just going to get our money's worth, we're going to get more than our money's worth out of him. He's going to continue to move the airport agenda forward. He talked about the efforts in 2014 and the projects that we're going to be working on. Those projects have been primarily his responsibility as the executive director and the manager. The day-to-day -day operations, Pete runs, and he's very familiar with what's going on on the airport and I don't think that the operations uh, business could be done much better than the way Pete does it, to be honest with you. And so he's going to take over for Cameron on a temp temporary basis, and uh, he's going to provide the leadership. He's, he's actually going to be the person in charge, which is a uh, subject here on the third item. Cameron comes with uh, some uh, excellent background, but some accreditations that are pretty hard to find. If we went out and started searching for somebody to replace Cameron, uh, there are probably two things that would be of concern. First of all, I don't think we'd get somebody the same caliber as Cameron. Certainly wouldn't have the same accreditation because they wouldn't be looking at the Rapid City Airport for a job. They'd be looking at Omaha. They'd be looking at a city of around 300,000. And frankly, uh, that's where Cameron's, Cameron's uh, abilities and calibers I don't, lead him uh, somewhere down the road because he does have that capability. So we want to retain him. And then secondly, we want to keep things moving. Uh, we don't want a pause while uh, Cameron uh, is gone. We expect him to continue to move the airport forward. And uh, I have no doubt that that is exactly what's going to happen. And then finally, if we decided to try and replace Cameron, by the time we did the advertisement, uh, did the interviews and got somebody on board, we'd probably be eight months down the road and it would be almost time for him to come back. So 
At this point, Cameron is committed to come back, and so why wouldn't we take advantage of the opportunity is really the question you have to ask yourself. It provides continuity of leadership and direction for the airport, and I think it's going to be seamless, in spite of the fact that it's going to be a long-distance commute. So what's he going to do while he's gone? Well, that list that he had for 2014 is abbreviated uh, right there on item three. Long-term planning, that's huge for us in the airport. We've executed almost every project on the, la on the last long-term plan. It's time for us to renew the long-term plan because without a long-term plan that outlines the projects, the FAA is not going to approve any projects. And so we need to get rolling again and move on with the next additions to the airport. And that's all outlined in the long-range plan. And with Cameron's vision and his coordination with the contractor who's going to build the long-range plan, I have no doubt that what we'll end up with is an excellent document. He talked a little bit about developing the GA terminal. I think that's a huge step forward for our airport. It's really uh, one of the shortfalls we have right now in not having a modern terminal. If you fly anywhere else in the country, you'll find that their GA terminals are excellent. And we have a plan to get just as uh, the same class at terminal out there in the general aviation program, and he's going to be instrumental in that. Uh, his involvement, uh, he's not going to be in on every board meeting. And the reason why is because we expect Pete Gertz to be the leader out there and take care of business. He's going to provide project reports, and he's going to provide input into our working sessions, which are held on a quarterly basis. And he's going to provide a report that outlines on a monthly basis what he's done. And frankly, if we're not happy with it, we're, we will address the issue at that point. So who's in charge? It's a little difficult for Cameron to be in charge when he's in New Zealand, and we don't expect that. We expect Pete Gertz, who's the operations director out there, to be in charge. So when we have a question, or you have a question, you should be able to call Pete and you should be able to get the answer, just like you would with Cameron. I think it's worth noting, though, he probably deserves a little bit of a break and maybe some opportunity to research the question if, he, if he's not familiar with it and get back. But I have no doubt that he'll come back with the right answer. Provides a staff development opportunity for everybody at the airport. It allows the uh, second level managers to grow into those positions and perhaps provide some opportunities for them down the road. And if there's an emergency or something that is um, uh, that Pete really needs some help with, Cameron's only a phone call away. And so that relationship, I think, is there. He's going to be in on their staff meetings on a weekly basis. So I don't, uh, I don't see any problems. Um, this letter of agreement or memorandum of agreement is going to come before the board on the 27th of January. And all the preliminary discussions we've had with the board as a whole, uh, I would expect that the board would approve uh, the memorandum of agreement and approve uh, the uh, leave and the opportunity for Cameron uh, to implement the plan that we've laid out here. Uh, with that, I. Uh, would stand for any comments or questions from the council or the mayor. Thank you, General. And as you can see, the, the board has definitely done their homework. We feel very positive. Even more so, we feel very confident. We have visited with the deputy directors. We have visited with Pete Gertz himself. And uh, to know them is to know how competent and how, um, how confident we are in the job that they can do. They've been trained by one of the best, by their executive director, and they're ready to serve. They're ready to serve this airport. This is their job. It's very important to them, and they live by it every day. And we're here to uh, make sure that that success continues. And with that, we give it back to the council. Thank you, Lisa. We have three lights from council members, and we'll first go to Councilman Jerry Wright. I'd like to make a motion that the council support the airport board's decision to retain Cameron as per the agreement. We have a motion by Wright and a second by Lewis to support the airport's, airport board's uh, decision. Okay. We'll discuss that motion. You stall the floor if you'd like it. Thank you. I just want to reiterate uh, my confidence in Cameron. I've known him for several years before being on the council, but I also served on the uh, airport board as the liaison for city council. 
I've also known Lisa for quite a while, and I've known Ray Carpenter since about 1956. I trust all these people 100,000%, and I concur with your analysis, and I think it's a good way to go, and that's where I stand. Thank you. Was he right about that, 1956? Uh, that <laughs> Did you want to clarify the record? It's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's TMI. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll go to Councilman Bill Clayton. Sorry about that, my microphone died. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I'd, I'd like to say this. In, so often, we have people who would like to sidewalk quarterback, and when we have a big decision like this to make, we, we see things that show up in the paper, and it, it always seems that those critics speak louder than the people who are pro the good decisions that are being made. I, I don't mind repeating. I've said this before from up here. I, I have been thoroughly impressed with the caliber of people we have on our city staff from the department directors on down. And the airport is one of those functions where we don't have to worry about it. We know that we've got one heck of a guy at the helm. You know, Cameron and I have spoken very little. I, I can't say that I've known him for a long time. General, we've never met, but I'm impressed with what you've had to say. You should Lisa? have been there in 1956. Well, <laughs> I know where I was in 1956, but, <laughs> but also as a man of, of, a, of a uniform for, for 26 years, you know, I, I, I respect your service, sir, and, uh, and you, you come to us with, with a lot of expertise. Lisa, I don't know where you get the energy for all the things you do. And, uh, you know, I, my hat is off to the airport board for the hard work that you do. And this is a tough decision. I don't mind saying when I first heard about it, I felt a little bit negative. But I've read everything there is that, that, that I have been able to get my hands on thus far. And, and I know that you folks have left no stone unturned, that you've really wrestled with this, you've thought it through. Your presentation, I think, proves that. And it's not like Cameron is going somewhere where we can't reach him. You know, with today's technology, with, with, with Skype, you know, it, it can be face to face. It could be telephone, email, um, and certainly, if need be, he can be on an airplane coming back home. Um, I, I think the only thing that I would ask, Cameron, if you don't mind coming back to the microphone, and this, this would be your opportunity, sir, to tell us and the people of Rapid City, you know, we're, we'll lose you for a year, and we can only hope that this is an investment to bring you back. So your personal assurance that this is your home, that you're not looking elsewhere, and, uh, and, and you've, you've set 365 days. We, we know in the military, when you leave for a one-year assignment, you, you start out with a calendar and you color in the blocks until DROS, you know, and that's when you come home. And just, just tell us, and I'll, I'll be quiet then, sure. your assurance is that you're coming back, this is home, and, uh, and the airport is where you wish to serve for a long, long time. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Uh, you know, it, it's always hard to predict. It, you know, you, you can't predict uh, the future. But I will tell you that I have, I moved to this uh, community in 1995. Um, my wife and, and uh, my children moved here to serve up uh, at Ellsworth Air Force Base. And we served out there for, for 10 years. And my children were all raised here. And uh, my, you know, significant part of my career was here, half of my career in the military was here. Uh, and um, my wife uh, has a, a career here as well. Uh, we both serve on local community boards. She's on the United Way board, I'm the, on the Cornerstone Rescue Mission board. Um, my children are now grown, now that I've raised them, they're all grown up and they live here and they work here and they're starting families here. Uh, so this is, this is home. Um, you know, I can't. Uh, I can't say that that absolutely um, that uh, that that's what the future holds. But uh, but we have a home here, uh, we have family here, and we have a lot of history. Uh, this is a great opportunity for my wife and I to to uh, experience something new, um, and uh, and then you know it's in our heart and our desire to come back. We want to be here in this community. And before we move on to the next slide, would you also be willing to address the international executive? conference that you plan on participating sure. in and helping to host down in New Zealand? 
Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so uh, our trade organization, AAAE, has asked me to help with uh, an international conference in New Zealand. It just so happens that it's at the same time. Uh, it's going to be in the uh, first week of February. So I've been on the planning committee uh, working uh, uh, on that uh, particular conference for about six months now. Um, unfortunately, we haven't gotten our visas back, so I'm not sure if we're going to be able to leave in time for it, but nevertheless, I'm helping to put this conference on, and if our visa gets here in time, then I'm going to be speaking at that conference. Um, in addition to that, one of the great things, one of the great opportunities that's given me is, is that I've been able to reach out to some of the uh, airport directors in New Zealand, and so one of the things that I'm going to be doing there is I'm going to be learning as much as I can about how do they run their airports there, how, do they, how are they different. You know, they face similar problems, but uh, what's the difference? Uh, what, you know, how do they approach those? So I'm really excited uh, from that perspective that there's going to be some professional development uh, on, on my part as well. We'll go to John Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Cam. You do a great job out there. I've always said that, and I always thought that, you know, we've got the best person for the job. Now, that said, I have a couple of questions for Lisa. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Thank you very much. Hi. Thank you. I have had a tremendous amount of questions from people over this, um, a lot of them not so positive. Um, you know, I did ask Joel, I did ask the mayor last week about a contract for Cam when he leaves because I think it's very important that the citizens of Rapid City know exactly what they can expect out of Cameron, and I know they'll get it. Um, the, my questions that I do have that people have asked me and I'm curious about also is I imagine because Pete will be taking over a lot of duties that he will be getting a raise and I'm just curious percentage wise you don't have to give me any numbers but you have a close idea of what that will be. I have a fantastic answer for you a nice positive one that you can share with your constituents. We already have uh, our deputy directors aligned with a raise it's already in the program. Uh, it's just a matter of our implementing it by vote, by, uh, by official business, which is on the agenda. So it's already in the plan, and it's no more than it would have already planned. So what uh, those duties are going to be will continue throughout the year uh, at the salaries that are already um, on, on, an, on an agenda item. Thank you, Lisa. And I think that, that answers a lot of questions because one of them that I've had brought to me is if we give him a raise now to take over these duties, what do we do a year from now? Mm -hmm. You know, because it wouldn't be fair for him to say all of a sudden, you're not going to make $10,000 a year more than you're making right now. So anyway, thank you very much. You're welcome. Another question is, we know roughly that Cameron's going to be paid 25% of his salary. What's his benefits package going to be? Is that going to drop to 25% too or is he going to retain 100% of his benefit package he has now? Well, he's got vested benefits, and um, the, the $500, you know, he's, he's non-union, so we've got a scale that we're working from within as well. And um, on the benefit plan, is there any, any change on that? Go ahead. May I? Yes, you may. Thanks, Ken. the negotiations on that. Thanks for the question. So the, right now in the contract, uh, we're talking about a 25% of my current salary. Um, the, I, don't take, uh, I don't take the health care uh, that the city offers because I have military. Um, and so the, other, the only other thing would be the retirement. And the retirement, I would continue to um, contribute to it, but it would be at my reduced salary. Uh, so there is that benefit uh, retained. There is some discussion about uh, vacation and whether or not that would accrual at this point in the contract. It's not, it wouldn't accrual uh, even at a 25% rate. So. Okay, yeah, because two questions I had were sick pay and vacation. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I don't, Joel's been working with the, with the contract and we have a draft contract, but I don't anticipate, I've got some, I've got a lot of sick time that I've already have saved up that I haven't used. It's available if I, I need it, but I, in this situation, I wouldn't need it. Mm -hmm. um, and then my vacation time, uh, you know, we have been discussing it, but frankly, it's, it's not really an issue for me. Yeah, and the amount of sick time that you have is really not a question. The, the amount that you would accrue is, an, is a question, so. Maybe Joel can answer that. As Cameron indicated, when it comes to annual leave, the vacation, at this point, what we're discussing is either no accrual or a 
percentage accrual equivalent to the quarter percent. Um, there hasn't been any discussion of a full accrual of vacation. The sick leave is a little different in that the city, all city employees receive their sick leave at January 1st. So Cameron's already received his sick leave for the year, January 1st. Um, again, it would, it would go again on January 1st of next year and you get the full, um, but again, unless there was a major illness, it's probably not an issue. Using myself as an example, I've worked for the city for 10 years. I have numerous hours of sick leave because I'm, I hardly ever use it. So it was something that was decided, frankly, that on the sick leave, it really wasn't worth the discussion because of the way it was accrued. I think if it was accrued on a time period, we might have looked at something different, um, but it didn't really appear to be an issue. As far as the benefits, as Cameron said, the retirement, he's going to pay on a reduced rate. We would match on that rate. So our, our match would be the same. I think what Lisa was referring to is when the position of the deputy directors was created, it was actually recommended that they be placed at step 23 on the city pay scale and they were paid, uh, they were actually placed on step 21. So there's been a plan in place to try to get them up to the step 23. That would be part of the plan. And in addition to the contract being on the agenda of the airport board, for everyone to see there's going to be a resolution on what to do with the deputy director salaries. I can't give you an exact percentage. Um, frankly, looking at the number, it seems still fairly mo modest for somebody who's going to be the second level person at an airport. Um, I would assume that there's going to need to be some discussion when Cameron returns about what to do with the salaries, but they are probably going to stay at the level 23 rate. But frankly, we'll have to address that next year when he returns. Um, what we've looked at is that overall, even with the increase to the three deputy director salaries, with Cameron being reduced to 25% of his salary overall, the salary for those four people in the airport will still be less than currently budgeted for this year. So it will actually save the taxpayer some money over the next year. And then at the end of the year, when he comes back on, we'll have to address what to do with the three deputy directors. But considering they were originally scheduled or originally recommended to be placed at, at step 23, that the plan I would assume is to keep them at that level at that time. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Mayor. And for a point of clarification, the the meeting is Tuesday the 28th at 9 a.m.? No, or it was Monday? changed to Monday the 27th uh, for all uh, board members to attend. So okay. it's going to be Monday the 27th at 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock. And the contract, as I understand it, will be linked prior to the meeting. It's being worked on now. Very good. And we'll go to Bonnie Peterson. Bonnie's light isn't working. Where's her microphone? <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, the, this council really has no authority in this situation, and but I wanted to just make a couple of comments, though, where I feel that more and more businesses are allowing or looking for ways to give work and life balance to people. Um, Spoomers are all dying off, and we've just uh, the newer generation thinks they need to enjoy their life instead of work it. So, uh, so anyway, I think that's a good thing. I think that this will ultimately benefit all our employees and our, uh, especially our uh, directors uh, that we have uh, here at the city because of this learning curve and seeing how it works and so Cameron you got to make sure it works really well so that <laughs> other people get a chance um, I think it's a tremendous opportunity for the deputy directors I don't know if that's their current thing to for them to gain skills and uh, polish you know their resume and all would be fantastic and um, I just, I just think, why not? You know, yeah, it sucks when you can't do that at your job. 
But I think, though, eventually, I think the trends are that we are allowing people to take more leave and come back to their job. And I would say it's uh, way overdue. And hopefully so our, our uh, city uh, directors will also benefit from this um, sometime in the future. Not that I want you to leave or anything like that or to take time off, but I think to find work-life balance, if maybe not a year, maybe three months, six months, uh, just a, a benefit because I think we say we value our employees and I think this is a, a way to show that we value our employees and ultimately would also benefit the city. So we'll see and... Um, I'm glad the board was creative uh, to come up with a solution, and I think Rapid City will be better off for it. Thank you. Brad Estes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I'm kind of a, if it burns gas, I, I like it, and I've, so I've been flying out of this airport for 25 years, and if I have spare time, that's usually where you can find me is hanging out at the airport. So I've had the opportunity to, to interact with uh, the people in the administrative portion of the airport for years, and uh, and I've real, and now as the liaison to the airport, I, I've really enjoyed getting to meet and interact with the, with the current board and Cameron and, and his staff. I just really appreciate personally the level of detail that this board has gone to uh, uh, given this question and this opportunity for Cameron and his wife. Um, quite frankly, given the size of this community and, and the different divisions and the number of employees, it, I, I'm kind of surprised we haven't been posed with this kind of a, a situation before now. And um, I think it's win-win, you know, it sure, sure to, I mean, the 25%, I mean, you could go down the line here and we all might have a different opinion, 1% or the, the one way or the other as to, as to how the compensation sh should be made. But I think uh, when you consider that for Cameron coming home, he'll have a job, and, and, and uh, when you look at how long it would take to replace him, um, you know, I think that I think the savings in continuity um, speaks for itself. and. Uh, I, I'm going to support this. Thanks. John. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just didn't mention one thing. Uh, Cam, I, like I said, I think you're doing a great job. I think the airport board is doing a great job. Um, I will not support Jerry's motion only for the fact because I haven't seen the contract yet. So I'm not going to support something that I have not seen the contract yet. So, but I do think you're doing a wonderful job. I think this is something we need to discuss within the council's possible policy change because I see us going forward in this direction in the future. I see m hopefully more people being able to work remotely instead of losing their jobs. But until I see the contract, I'm sorry, I can't really support it. Thank you. Thank you, John. And we'll go to Richie Nordstrom. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and um, first of all, I want to thank Cameron for the excellent job and, and to the uh, uh, board for putting on the presentation. Uh, I learned quite a bit of again tonight. I'm always learning something every time I talk to you folks. So I appreciate that opportunity. Um, I also want to congratulate your wife, uh, Cameron. I know you haven't introduced her yet, but I just also want to congratulate her for her opportunity that she's going to get to do down in New Zealand. and. I know we haven't spent a lot of time on that, and we don't need to, but I just want to acknowledge that, Mrs. Humphrey, that you're, uh, you've got a great opportunity in front of you, so congratulations. And then speaking to you as well, I'm going to take a scurrilous plug here, if I have that opportunity here, is that I've always talked to Cameron about taking our dance class. <laughs> he is not taking it up as, on that opportunity, so I want to get you that invite to take this, uh, invite you to our dance class. It'll be again, again, again here in the, as soon as you get back. So come on down. Thank you. Thank you, Richie. Before, before we proceed to the wrap up here, I just want to mention the following. The motion on the floor is to support the airport board's decision. 
noting that the airport board hasn't made a decision yet, I still think that the motion is appropriate because what you're doing by passing the motion as it is, you're supporting the, the responsibility statutorily for the airport to ultimately make uh, the decision. The airport board is an executive board. They've been entrusted to make executive decisions and I believe that we should trust them to weigh the facts, listen to the input and concerns, and ultimately make the right decision. We have a, a talented businesswoman, Lisa Modrick. We have a talented attorney, uh, Rich Huffman. We have a talented architect, Dick McConnell. And we have a, a former councilman and uh, talented businessman, uh, Todd Ossenfort. And we also have a, a two-star general, uh, Ray Carpenter, who, by the way, I think deserved a third star, but that's a, another story for another day. But I, I, I really think we have a very talented uh, board, and uh, I haven't known uh, uh, any of them since 1956, but I, I think they're all good people and I think uh, we should trust them to make, uh, it's going to be a difficult decision for them. They have a lot of facts to weigh and the decision has not been made. It will be, uh, there will be uh, discussed in, uh, at the airport board meeting on, on Monday, uh, January 28 at 9 a.m. out at the airport board uh, conference room in the, uh, in the terminal and the the contract will be linked uh, to that agenda. So I do think the motion on the floor is appropriate, is to support the airport board's uh, right and responsibility to make this decision. Any further discussion on the motion? Called. Question's been called. Any objections to calling the question? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries with one no from Councilman Roberts. Thank you very much for the discussion. Thank you for the opportunity as well for Thank the you. report and uh, for your support. Thank you. Who was it? We're now on public hearing items 58 to 62. Public hearing is open. I do not have any speaker request forms for these items. Have I missed anyone on 58 to 62? Seeing none. The uh, public hearing is now closed for items 58 to 62. Uh, we are going to handle these as consent items, 58 through 62. Would anyone like to remove any of these for separate consideration? If not, can we have a motion on all of them? Motion by Nordstrom, second by Lewis. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. We are now on our last item on the agenda, item 63, the bill list. Pauline. We do have one addition to the bill list to Boyer Truck Parts in Sioux Falls for $150,544, bringing our new total to $9,717,368.81. Motion by Robert, second by Wright. Any discussion? Richie Nordstrom. Pauline, just to uh, give you a heads up, I, I did get an answer from this, your staff on those questions, I, so thank you for doing that. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. We have a motion to adjourn. We have a motion by Clayton and a second by Wright. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. And we are adjourned at 7.54 p.m. Thank you, everyone.